abject violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil it does is permanent. This was a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. My statement is violence is not the answer and I do indeed support it. But I'm not the only one who supports it. 15 out of 27 graders support that violence is never the answer. My first topic is that the amount of people dying is usually not even worth the effect. In the French Revolution, many people died just because the spoiled rich made food prices too high for the poor. In the end, Napoleon reduced the price of food, but was it really worth the amount of lives taken from the people? Also, in the First World War, so many people, so many soldiers from around the world fought just because of the assassination of one archduke. Was it really worth all the people dead? My next topic is that problems can be solved without violence and bloodshed. Gandhi proved this by kicking the British out of India by using only words and no violence. This proves that violence is not the only way to solve your problems. Also, Martin Luther King Jr. immensely helped stop segregation by giving only speeches to motivate um, civilians for riots. But he was eventually assassinated, but seg segregation was almost completely stopped. And what my opponent might say is that sometimes the victim is not controllable and violence is the only way to calm them down. But just because, un just because they are uncontrollable does not mean that violence needs to be used. There are other solutions. I'd like to <coughs> close this statement with another quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Victory attained by violence is a tantamount to a defeat, for it is momentary. I now stand ready for cross-examination. Is violence the answer? No. Is violence sometimes the answer? No. So has there never been an example in history where violence was the best possible answer? Uh, there has, but the end result has almost never been good. Well, in response to that, in World War I, in your opinion, what was the correct non-violent response to Germany's advance through Europe? Um, I feel like the best response would be to try to verbally make peace in between the countries. Well, are you aware that in the beginning of World War I, we did try and stay out of the war? Yes, but violence has brought us into the war, and violence has caused such a loss to the United States and the rest of the world. Well, as you said that we did try and stay out of the war, eventually the only way to stop the Germans was to get involved. Are you aware that once we entered the war, we did succeed in achieving our goals in stopping Germany's advance through Europe? Yes. So, are you aware that in the end, the Allied powers won? Yes. So, in the end, didn't we achieve our goal through violence? Our goal was, our original goal was to uh, maintain peace throughout the entire world, except our goal was not achieved because we were dragged into the war by, um, Violence. But this also stands true for all the other countries involved in the war, being at least on the Allied powers, because they did end up achieving their goal. Um, I do not, I, I do not agree with you because I believe that most countries try to um, not uh, have war with other countries because it is an economic loss and there and um, there is a lot of decrease in population. But if we're looking at this as a black and white win and lose, in the end, wasn't violence successful? Becky, you have three minutes for your opening statement. Every day, millions of people have their voices quieted. They cannot express how they feel and are forced to live under the rule of their suppressors. Negotiating will do nothing for those who don't have a voice to negotiate with. I'm arguing violence is not the answer negative. My first contention is, although violence is bloody, it is often the fastest way to solve a problem and prevent worse violence in the future. This relates to the Africans in the late 1800s. Believing that violence is not the answer led the Africans to hold back and not fight for their rights when the Europeans began to take over. The conquest of Africa is referred to as the scramble for Africa, 
and it took place from 1885 to 1910. If the Africans had fought back, they could have decreased the amount of violence that followed due to slavery. Violence is often necessary and something that states you are a believer in what you stand for. Another example of this is from the book Animal Farm. The animals used violence to get their way. They had no voices and no ways to express themselves to the humans. By using violence, they were quickly freed from their unfair suppressors. When there are no options, as there were none for the animals, violence is a quick way to fight for a better future. This one statement was enough to strike fear in the humans all throughout England. This act of violence made a stronger impact faster than any formal protest could have made. It was also necessary to show people that they were serious. My second contention is, violence can lead to economic stimulation. Before the start of World War I, there were many people waiting for a war and wanting change. Many people felt that their rights were being hindered because of their religious beliefs, <coughs> their political beliefs, and their ethnic beliefs. If, if Gabriela Francis, a member of a powerful rebel group, had not murdered Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria, a war never would have happened and people would not be able to practice their beliefs. The war also led to economic progress. More jobs were available to people who needed to make an income. The war led to a demand for soldiers to go to fight on the front. Germany had 430,000 soldiers in 1870 and had 812,000 soldiers in 1914 during the war. The war gave 409,000 people in jobs in Germany alone. Similar things happened to all the countries who were part of the war. The war also did wonders for the American economy. Before they entered the war, they were making money by selling goods to all of the countries involved in the war. The violence of the war gave an economic boost to all of the people involved. My opponent may argue that violence leads to war and war leads to death, but war does not always lead to a negative outcome. War leads to innovation. The end result creates a society that is fairer. It can make people realize where there is need for improvement. We must suffer through the hard times to get to a better future. It is a part of who we are, as Joe Rogan once said, no matter how civilized we are and how much society has curbed violent behavior. Human beings still have the same genes they had 10,000 years ago. Our bodies are designed to have a certain amount of physical stress and violence in them. We're designed to run from jaguars and fight to defend our territory. This quote speaks directly to the fact that violence is a part of human nature. As strange as it may sound, violence is something every person possesses fairly. It lets people speak out for themselves. Thank you, I'm now stand ready for cross-examination. Sean, we have two minutes to cross-examine. Okay. time again. Do you believe that violence is never the answer? No. Why do you think our school, our school has so many rules against violence if violence is not the answer? Or violence is the answer? Because I think our school doesn't believe that the problems that we have they're so small that they don't have to be solved by, by violence. But I believe that bigger problems, such as disagreements between countries, do need to be solved by violence. In World War I, over 16 million people died and 20 million people were injured. Are you saying that the end result is worth all of this bloodshed? Well, before World War I, there were many, many people, over half of the population, who were waiting for a war and wanting change. So I do think that, I'm not saying that the deaths were justified, but I'm also saying that yes, millions of people were killed, but also the millions and millions of people who followed had, had the ability to live a fair life. Do you think violence is necessary to accomplish a goal? I think that violence can, depending on the goal, that violence can make a strong impact and help you achieve the goal much quicker than any negotiation could do. Okay. Um, do you know who was who assassinated uh, Gandhi? No, I do not. Do you know who assassinated Martin Luther King Jr.? No, I do not. Do you know who Martin Luther King Jr. was? Yes. Do you know who Gandhi was? Yes. So the people that used nonviolent strategies were remembered, but not the people that used violence against them. Yes, but but Martin Luther, for example, Martin Luther King Jr. His death, people then wanted to fight for him. They kept his ideas and they change them just a little so that they could become even more powerful. I believe that, yes, negotiating can work sometimes, but it does. It will eventually fade away, whereas violence will leave a reminder in all the people who follow of what happened and what violence can do. Time. You each have one minute for the closing statement.
will begin to hear a opening statement and then your closing statement, and you'll have one minute to do that. So the pleasure of yours starting now. Oh, what my opponent stated was about the world, First World War was that it brought economic growth. But what about all of the loss um, that happened when other countries bombed them? They still had to rebuild the buildings. Um, violence is not the answer. Peace is always the answer. To close this debate, I have a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. At the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. Thank you for your time and patience. I have stated that violence is a quick way to finish a problem and that it is something that gives everybody a voice in decisions. I have also argued that violence is a powerful statement that shows you are strong by your beliefs. My opponent argues that violence is only temporary. But I ask you, do we still think about World War I? Have we spent time in our daily lives multiple, multiple times thinking about what happened during World War I? My opponent also argues that negotiation works better than violence. This is untrue. Negotiation can provide a strong lead, but it is violence that pushes it through and makes the statement. In the words of Jim Morrison, violence isn't always evil. What's evil is the infatuation with violence. This quote says violence isn't always a bad thing. The obsession with violence is where the true evil lies. Violence is a part of being human. Thank you.